What is your sex education horror story? I was filling in for the ninth grade life skills teacher while she was at an appointment and she left a chart for the kids to fill in with different birth control methods slash their percent effectiveness slash any side effects. I'm at the front of the room leading the discussion with the info they need to fill in their charts. The last method on the chart was abstinence. I said there are no side effects. One of the freshman boys raised his hand and said I know a side effect of abstinence carpal tunnel. I couldn't even pretend that it was inappropriate. I laughed as hard as the kids did. Not horrible, but we were supposed to play a health jeopardy game but the teacher accidentally chose a sex positions one. Not a horror story. But I got detention for asking if you have crabs and scabies at the same time do they fight. Split us up into boys and girls with the girls going off into another room for instruction. Then two teachers screamed at us for what must have been 20 minutes that if anyone laughed or made a joke we would be suspended. Nice intro, thanks. There was a kid in class who raised his hand and asked, what's it called when girls spray out that liquid during sex? The teacher responded girls don't do that. He said trust me it's real, I've seen it a bunch of times in videos she never responded. That was 6th grade. We did a thing in 9th grade where anyone could write down a question anonymously. One was about average penis size. This was in the early 90s, so that wasn't something we could just Google. The sex ed teacher, who was highly trained at coaching football but probably not at sex ed, told us between 7 and 9 inches. Probably every guy nervously glanced around the room and tried to put in their sure, that sounds about right face. I was convinced for about a year that I had a micro penis. Student in 5th grade asked at what age males grow a penis. About 9 or 10 weeks into embryonic development usually. In 6th grade, I had honest to god never heard the word masturbate before in my life. The teacher was explaining stuff or maybe it was a video about safe sex or abstinence, I can't recall which, but the word came up and nothing explained what it meant. I asked what is masturbation, and an awkward silence fell over everything, maybe because the teacher, a man, thought I was joking or trying to be funny. He slowly realized I was serious and then struggled so hard to explain it appropriately, it's when, you know, you do things to feel good with yourself, you touch things or and I felt terrible for asking. To this day, I don't know who was more embarrassed, me, the teacher, or everyone else. Fifth grade. They separated the boys and girls into two classrooms. They must have thought the boys were too young to need any sex ed, late 1980s, so we were read a short story, Ray Bradbury's A Sound of Thunder, where they go back in time to kill a dinosaur, by the school principal, a man. In the classroom with the girls, they papered over all the windows and had a teacher standing guard outside. The girls must have gotten the straight truth from our cranky female teacher about how they were all about to have their periods, get boobs, grow pubes, needing deodorant for body odor, everything. This was probably the first time many had heard some of this stuff. Because when the boys came back into the room, all the girls were shell-shocked, some were crying. I asked the girl who sat next to me, what story did your class read? A teacher asked the class, who can name a part of the male reproductive anatomy. And this one kind answered with full confidence, a vagina. One kid in my class asked if you could get STDs from having sex with a chicken. Kind of put him on the spot and was a little suspicious. Not really a horror story in high school sex ed our teacher had a big section on condoms which culminated with the class betting on how stretchy they were to prove that no one should accept the I'm too big for them excuse. Well one air pump and one condom later we had our answer at about the size of a long watermelon. As our teacher was going to try to pop it, to prove they tough, our principal was doing his rounds and opened the door, saw our teacher smacking the shit out of an inflated condom and just backed away slowly. I found it hilarious. Ninth grade sex ed, teacher got a wooden penis to show how to put on a condom and the condom ripped in front of everyone. And our teacher said, in my 27 years of living, I have never seen a condom rip and someone in the back of class said, damn, teacher be getting hella bitches and he legit laughed nervously. We watched a video that tried to be hip and cool about sex ed and puberty. Direct quote, during puberty, a woman's hips and breasts grow. Insert poorly done animation of a girl's hips and breasts enlarging to ridiculous sizes. 
no, not that big. This isn't too much of a horror story but more of a moment that made me queasy. First, when discussing testicular cancer, they showed us a video of this skinny ginger guy in the shower filling up his balls to check for tumors. Then they gave us this fake nutsack to pass around and feel. It was pretty lifelike and you could squeeze the balls and they'd kind of pop slash slide around the sack. All I could think of was doing that to my own sack and it just made me feel uneasy. The whole experience was just awful. Probably 9 or 10 years old. Mid 1980s. Sex ed was taught at an after school event that lasted about a week. My mom and I and my best friend and her mom went. There were two rooms, girls and their moms in one room and boys and their dads in the next room over. We learned basic stuff mostly about anatomy. Slides were shown. Probably dating from the 1950s. Awkward. Then at one point, the male teacher came over and asked for a few of the moms to come next door to help with something. My imagination went wild, especially since my mom went with the man. I thought for sure that she and the other mom who went were being forced to show a live demo of what their boobs looked like or worse even though I didn't know what worse was yet. They were in there for what seemed forever. What were they doing to our moms? How is my mom going to explain this to my dad when we get home? Why is nobody alarmed? Because, they were moving desks. Well, I didn't think it was a horror story, but it stunned a few people. When I was 5 and my sister was 6 we had a fish tank, one of the fish we had was a pregnant Molly we liked quite a bit. Unfortunately she died before giving birth. So my sister, curious creature she is, asked our aunt, a trauma nurse who worked on life flight with a passion for teaching, if we could cut open the fish and save the babies. This would eventually lead first to my aunt dissecting the fish for us then to her explaining reproduction and ended with a rudimentary version of the talk. My aunt would take every chance she got to have a very graphic and factual discussion about sex and reproduction so we would always be armed with knowledge and never have anything unknown. But it was in hindsight a bizarre way to get educated on the birds and the bees. My friend's mom bought a sexual reproductive pop-up book. It covered both male and female. So you would open it up and the uterus and fallopian tubes would pop up at your face. You can only imagine the fun we had with that. We played STD in a cup everyone gets a cup of water, one cup of water has a bunch of dissolved starch in it, the STD. We went around swapping fluids to represent sex, and we're supposed to see if we could safely avoid STDs without protection, swapping fluids. At the end, we find out who had the STD by dropping iodine into each cup, turning the starch blue. If it turned blue, you tested positive. Everyone in the class ended up with the STD, even me, because even though I only had one partner, and they had only had one before me, the one before them was a slut and had everybody's fluids. Honestly, a very good exercise and warning. Except for that one kid. At the end, he dumped his test results and refilled his cup at the bubbler in order to claim he didn't have the STD, and he was good for more fluid swapping. Honestly, another good lesson on assholes who will lie about being clean. Use protection, kids. Being singled out by the teacher because I had a unique name for a scenario along with a boy who I didn't like. She used our names in a scenario talking about how a relationship develops. We had to stand in front of the class while she described random scenarios where we might end up having unprotected sex, and why it was bad. I was not attracted to this boy, and I'm sure he wasn't attracted to me either. Hearing her talking about us having sex was nightmarish. 6th grade sex ed, at the end of the class, the teacher opened the floor for questions. She said we could ask anything as long as it was a serious question. The only question I remember is when a kid, male, asked, it's okay to have sex with your sister, right? The teacher stared at him for what felt like a minute and said no. My sex ed teacher brought a kid up to the front of the classroom wearing a shirt that had two long sleeves and explained what an uncircumcised penis looked like. Teacher hit a girl in the face with a dildo. We did not learn how to put on condoms that year. It was taught by a Jesuit monk whose English language skills were Latin and by the end, one one-hour class, total, I sometimes couldn't even identify which sex the diagrams were showing. It was all line diagrams. All medical terms. Father Bertoli thought it went well, 
Anyway. My mom's the sex ed teacher. No context needed. In sixth grade I learned the term popping your cherry from some friends in sex ed class. I went home with this newly found knowledge and accused my older sister of having her cherry popped. She broke out in tears and my mom grounded me for a week. I was in high school in the 80s. For some reason, they must have really, really, really wanted us to learn sex ed, because it was taught to us in home economics, social studies, gym, and science. My home EC teacher chose to have us all take turns reading the textbook aloud. There was a boy in our class who was terribly shy on a normal day. Reading aloud from any textbook gave him anxiety, but on that day, the paragraph that fell to him was all about female genitalia. You could see his face turn purple, the closer his time to read came. He could barely articulate, but he asked to go to the bathroom and was denied. The teacher made him read the paragraph anyway. He did, but he shook and trembled so much that not a one of us even thought of making fun of him, it was so painful to watch. Then, the teacher said, that wasn't loud enough. Read it again. We all sat in stunned silence. He tried to say no, he pleaded. She persisted. He did read it again, through tears and clenched teeth. She then released him to go to the bathroom, and he bolted. I don't think he came back that day, and I think he learned more about human nature than sex ed.